How's it going, YouTube? This is Trainer J.I., and uh, yeah, today's a little bit different of a video. Maybe wondering why there's trash strewn across the uh, the camera right now, and you know, that's probably a good question to ask, but we'll get there a little bit later. Um, as the title might, des might describe, I almost was scammed out of $2,500. Yes, $2,500 was for 10 PSA graded cards. This started about three months ago. Uh, originally when I sold this stuff, um, just a disclaimer, this is going to be a lot of talking, um, and then there will be some action at the end, but just some talking for now. So sit back, relax, have a cup of tea, maybe coffee, depending on what time of day it is. So three months ago, I had a person, which I will not name the person that, that did this because there's no way that I can actually prove 100% that they did this themselves and that it wasn't somebody else. But in all likelihood, there's a good chance. So anyway, three months ago, somebody contacted me and they were from France and they wanted to purchase some cards. So we came up with a price, agreed upon it. Um, I can't remember all the cards and unfortunately I can't open the listing anymore because it's over three months old. All the only cards I remember for sure were like a PSA 10 Price of Sneasel and a PSA 10 Ho-O from uh, Neo 3. So, I mean, obviously you can tell with just those two, you're already starting to rack up a little bit of value, but it was $2,500 is what we came to an agreement on. He went to purchase them after I made him a custom listing. He could not purchase. He said that it would not allow him to purchase through the global shipping program. I said, you know, I'm not sure why. I don't know why that wouldn't let you, but he was showing me. I looked up the restrictions. It didn't seem like there should have been any restrictions on it for him purchasing these cards, but, um... Apparently it was, and there there is a good chance that it wouldn't let him purchase that that dollar amount through GSP. Although I thought the cap was around twenty five hundred to three k, so it is what it is. Um, we we talked about it, and he just you know he was adamant that he gets shipments all the time to ship it to his address, and um, everything would be fine. So I don't usually ever operate outside of the international shipping program or formerly known as the global shipping program that we get here in the United States from eBay. Um, they offer complete protection because once it arrives at their facility here in the U.S., it's in their hands. If it gets damaged, if it gets lost, if anything happens, they cover it. I mean, as long as you do your due, due diligence, they cover it. So there's really no reason for anyone here in the U.S. not to use the GSP. So that does make a lot of people upset because they do sometimes charge more as far as fees, um, import taxes, all that stuff goes. But again, it's full protection and it just doesn't make sense not to. So sorry to anybody international, but that's just how it goes. So me, against my better judgment, <clears throat> decided that I would go along with this because I saw the dollar signs in my eyes. I saw, oh, $2,500. This is a nice, quick, big sale. Like, cool. Well, against my better judgment, I went along with this and decided to do this. So I packed everything up. I figured everything out. I shipped everything out to this guy and it took forever. Um, it, it took absolutely forever to get there, which I'd done some reading and said that it's pretty normal for France, um, especially with the place that it was headed, which is called Chronopost. Now, Chronopost, apparently, there are scams galore. There is all sorts of terrible stories about that postage place in France. Um, I don't know anything about it. I don't know if it's I don't even know exactly how it works, if that's actually the customs, if that's just the shipping company and they have a customs center within it. Whatever it may be, if you ever hear chrono post when you're talking about shipping, beware. That's all I'm going to say. So it got to this place and it got to chrono post. They were processing it. <clears throat> and from everything I know, when something that goes through customs gets there, the all the information for the buyer is there. They are contacted so that they can retrieve any import fees, taxes, duties, etc. So I kept asking this buyer why he hadn't picked up the item because he was asking me why it wasn't delivered. And I said, well, you have to go pay your fees, your customs fees, etc. and pick it up. <clears throat> he said he wasn't informed anything about this, blah, 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 etc., etc. So we did a little runaround. Um, another thing that is going to seem odd towards the end of this is that this person never got mad or seemed overly stressed about this situation, especially considering the dollar amount, which also makes it very suspicious. So 
we go back and forth. It's at Chrono Post. He um, says that I need to reach out to this place to give them the information they need when all the information was there to begin with. Everything was packed properly. Um, everything was there properly. All the information, all the forms, etc. So it just so happens that the day I contact them, they email me back the next day saying that all of a sudden it's too late to uh, – to provide the information and that the package is on its way back, which I like, I mean, what are the odds of that? What are the odds that, you know, the day I contact it's on its way back. So whatever is what it is. <clears throat> I contacted the buyer. We discussed it. I said, Hey, when this gets back, I'll ship this back to you. Like we'll figure it out. And he said, yeah, I still want the cards. Sure. You know, great. So, um, package comes back like a week or so later, Looks all beat up, but at the time, um, I was I think I was processing orders or something, and I put it to the side. Um, decided to deal with it like about a week later, and I was talking to the buyer, and we were, hey, yeah, 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 send it back out, blah, blah, you know, sure. So before I sent it back out, and I was actually thinking about refunding him, which I'm glad I didn't, um, I was like, well, let me go through this stuff to make sure, you know, in this long journey that it didn't get damaged, destroyed, whatever. So we'll, we'll jump into the actual package here. And it's funny. It says Chrono Post on there. Um, does this have any other personal information? I guess if you're going to see it, if it does. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to say the name, but if you were able to see it on there, then that is what it is. Um, but uh, again, I don't know if that person actually, you can see the date on it too. 9-27-2023. So this is the package, and this is how it came back. And then you can see at the top here, it's funny, it's Chrono Post tape. It's opened. So this didn't necessarily strike me as a bad thing right away because um, if something goes through customs, there is a chance it gets open. There is a chance that they look to make sure what's there is what's there. So let me see if I can get this to where you don't see any personal information here. All right, so you can see on here, if you're zoomed in far enough or if it's big enough for you, that... Um, it's got the lot of 10 in case trading cards, it's got the other information and the other stuff would be on the rest of the paperwork. So everything's here. It looks normal. I get it back. I'm like opening it up. Well, then we start to open it and we see, well, man, why is, uh, why is my packaging all beat up and, and open? Why is it, uh, why is it ripped apart? And why do I suddenly own some, which I now know is Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Duel Packs? I don't sell Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. I don't deal in Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. Um, what, what exactly happened here? And how did I end up with these very valuable $30 booster boxes instead of $2,500 in graded cards? Well, it turns out that somebody in customs or potentially this person, you know, I'm not 100% sure, knew somebody in customs and basically the way i read on some of these sites is that the scam works they know somebody close at customs or within chrono post they do a swap they send the package back out they just play coy the whole time and they say hey yeah ship it back out and then when it arrives to them and has in this case Yu-Gi-Oh packs in it they still look like the good guy because it looks like I would have sent them the wrong item if I hadn't opened it or just resent it out. So fortunately for me, I didn't do that and I opened it and boom, this is what we got. So immediately I did some digging and this, this, this buyer who actually is a seller too has a storefront in France. Now, the reason that I was originally okay with doing the transaction with this person is because they had over 16k feedback which is well over what i have um i've had that kind of feedback on another account before for parts um for motorcycle and atv parts but i mean i know from firsthand what it takes to acquire that kind of feedback so i was comfortable with dealing with this person for that one big reason so again i did some digging and I found this person's website and I see that they have the graded cards, all that kind of stuff in their store. So I take a look and I'm thinking, I'm not going to say anything to this person and I'm going to wait this out and I'm going to see what they say and see what they do. They say nothing. Nothing gets said after they said, send it back out. 
which again is just red flags for me. You're dealing with twenty five hundred dollars, and you're obviously not that concerned about getting it. Um, and I, my hope was that they would be dumb enough to put the cards in the store. So you know, you see the cert, and you can say, "Hey, that's mine." Like there it is, plain as day. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. That'd have been nice to catch them red-handed, which is again why I can't prove one hundred percent that these people did this because there's there's no actual evidence that I can pin these people pin on these people just it's all stuff that when you kind of add one plus one equals two type deal so I wait this out and finally after this was right around Christmas time they opened a chargeback case because they couldn't open a return case anymore because it had been over three months. And that was also part of my goal too, was to stretch it out long enough that they couldn't open the return request or open a item not received request. Excuse me. So they open this up and I they open a chargeback dispute. So that's when you open a, a – you have an issue, you call your credit card company, say, hey, this is fraudulent or hey, this was a fraudulent – deal this person never sent me the goods and they you know go through the process and usually it's a long process but for some reason this one was super quick so i posted all the information i had i posted screenshots i posted all kinds of stuff and again another thing too when i looked up this person's store another thing that was a giveaway for me too was immediately when i googled it their their Google review rate is like a 2.7, which don't get me wrong, that kind of stuff. A lot of time people leave negative stuff and that you can't base somebody's, um, base somebody how they operate off of just a, a Google review. A lot of times that's BS, but the first two reviews for this person were literally two people complaining about them being eBay scammers. So immediately it was like red flags. It's like, dude, like this is just – this just – everything is is pointing in the direction that I just got scammed. So I use that. I use all the information that I have thus far. I've, I did everything. I got pictures of this stuff and I sent it all in. And within two days, the dispute was was closed and they did it in favor of the buyer. So not only did I lose – $2,500, but I technically lost the two or whatever, 100, 300 in eBay fees because you don't get refunded those when you go through that process and, ha and end up losing. And I also had to pay a $20 um, chargeback fee, which is basically there, you're paying them for the, for the work, the legwork they did going through everything and figuring it out. So all in all, probably ended up losing just about $2,800 just like that. Um, obviously for me, I put myself in and try to put myself in situations where if something like that happens, I don't have to worry about it. It's very frustrating and upsetting, but at the end of the day, I have plenty of money. I'm okay. It's good. You know, stuff like that, you know, it's part of business. You hate to see it, but it does happen. So <laughs> this chargeback happened like the day before New Year's. So like the, the refund happened the day be before New Year's. So... They get refunded this money, and I'm just like, man, like, what do I do? Can I call eBay? Like, so my theory was again, I'm gonna wait this out for because you have 30 days to appeal. I'm gonna wait this out for about, you know, 20 ish days, and I'm gonna see if these people are again dumb enough to upload the uh, cards on their website. So I did see some cards surface on there that were the same in 10, but my issue I ran into was I didn't have my scans anymore. And the listing was over 90 days old, so it was no longer loading and showing me the photos of the original items. So it was one of those things where um, at this point, even if I did see cards that I had sold them, I couldn't prove it because I didn't have the cert numbers anymore. So fast forward, we're here today. And I decided to call eBay today, and I know a lot of people always think that eBay is on the side of the uh, buyer, which in a lot of times they are because a lot of times people are bad sellers. Seriously, like there are a lot of bad sellers, and they don't want to admit that because they think that they're just hustling and grinding, but they actually really aren't great sellers. So me being a good seller – which I have no problem saying that just because I've been doing this for so long. Um, that's one thing I will give myself a pat on the back for. I've been doing eBay sales 
full-time for 10 years plus now and been on eBay. My, my eBay account, my mom made in 95. So I think it was 95. Or it was a 98. I think it's 98. Um, so you got to think, like, that's back when, like, Pokemon was coming out, bro, like, in the U.S. Like, so that's how old my longest standing account is. And this account that I have now for Pokemon is going on five years old. So I called, and unfortunately, I got somebody foreign. I think it was from India or something, which I don't have a problem with those people because usually they don't do bad. The issue lies in they speak decent English, but it's like they don't understand necessarily the the language they don't understand what's being said all the time which is fine like it's your second language it's completely understandable but it's always nice with these type of things especially with higher dollar ones where you can speak to somebody that like in from the u.s that gets it so they passed me off to somebody from um somebody from their payments department or whatever and his name was matt he was awesome he took care of me and he was like, yeah, like, you know, you did your due diligence. You did all this stuff. You're a top rated international seller. Um, you, your account's five years old. You have other longstanding accounts with us. Like, this is like, you know, you did everything you were supposed to do. Like, I'm sorry this happened to you. And he took care of me. They refunded me. Um, they refunded me the $2,500 plus a $20 charge immediately. So crisis averted. We got our money back. So the moral of this story is, number one, if you see dollar signs, don't it, – it's too good to be true a lot of times. It's just like anything. It's too good to be true. Don't uh, don't let the dollar signs blind you from what should be common sense. Um, I was stupid enough to do that. I, I don't know why. It's not like I wouldn't have been able to sell those cards easy peasy. But I did. that's what I did and that's what happened. And it's a lesson learned. Um, other thing to take from this is, again, being a good seller always pays. So if I wouldn't be the type of seller that I am – I'd be sitting here and I'd probably be out this $2,500 ish dollars. And again, I buffer myself so that doesn't matter. But I mean, $2,500 is $2,500. I mean, that's a PSA order and the thousand dollars in raw cards, or you know, $2,500 is an as a nice fat like PSA ten card is something high end like you know, $2,500 is bills for the month and like mortgage. Like, I mean, we're we're talking like a substantial amount of money, no matter how much money you make. So, you know, be a good seller, be a good seller as far as the, the part of if you're going to do this full time as a business, learn to buffer yourself so that when storms like this hit, you can weather them. It's extremely important. It's something that I learned very early on the hard way um, when I was running another business. I actually had to have my parents bail me out on um, taxes one or, one or two years because I was too stupid to put enough tax money back. Now, I did pay them back. But, you know, I, I had to have somebody, you know, bail me out when I was younger because I was too dumb to, to put tax money aside and thought I was just balling out, making all this money. So be a good seller, do your due diligence. And again, set yourself up so you don't have to worry about situations like this. Um, lastly, with this, uh, I, I just want to make sure again that I don't, I can't 100% prove that this seller did this, you know, I can, there, there'll never be a way that I can prove that he, um, he's the one that orchestrated all this or knows somebody at Chrono Post or anything, but why would I randomly get TCG items in replacement for my graded cards? Like, how does, how does that happen when this person sells this kind of stuff? So, I mean, you be the judge. I, I'm not saying they did do it. I'm not saying they didn't do it, but is what it is. So just be careful out there. Do your due diligence. Make sure you have all the information um, saved away when you have stuff like this happen. Take the time, put it all together, and don't just be upset. Like, you know, just do what you got to do, and a lot of times it'll work out. Like, it'll be okay. So that being said, let's go into the final part of this. Since they were so nice as to provide us with these packs to open i'm not a big Yu-Gi-Oh fan any well not anymore i do like I, I was a big Yu-Gi-Oh fan back in the day i played for a long time but it's been a long time since i opened a Yu-Gi-Oh pack so let's open let's open through this stuff let's uh this this is going to turn into an opening video so it's a story slash a lesson slash an opening it's all in one you're getting everything here so i did look ahead of time at this set 
There is a Abyss Soldier, which is the big hit. Like, again, these, and that's what's the worst part. Like, these boxes are, like, 30 bucks. So they just threw in, like, the cheapest Yu-Gi-Oh thing. And they might even be 30. It might be, like, 15. The cheapest Yu-Gi-Oh boxes they could possibly find. Let's see here. We have tabs, yeah. So there's an Abyss Soldier in here. There's a Bluetooth Burst Dragon that I thought was cool. I have the list in front of me. I'm not going to look up every single card, but... We'll breeze through these and, again, just uh, take in what we were, were given in place of $2,500 worth of graded cards. <laughs> All right. First up, we got this guy. He's like a mecha. Reading, he's reading a book. That's, that's, I mean, he's, he's literate. So we got this chick with a mouth body. Uh, we got the army base this guy's from. Ooh, we will look this guy up. We'll look up. What, what are you? JP058. This is Heartless. No, that can't be it. Is this JP? Oh, 58. Haha. <laughs> this is Power Shock. So this is oh, this is a trap guard. Okay. Power Shock. Well, that's interesting. It looks pretty. I will say these cards feel very dainty compared to Pokemon cards. Um, the uh definitely smaller. And I'm do I have a card around anywhere? Yeah, I can do actually. Let's see. How much smaller is it? Mm, pretty substantial. Well, maybe not. I just feel, I don't know. I guess when you're so used to holding Pokemon cards all the time and you hold something like this, it does feel extremely small. And then our last card, uh, we got a foil like stamp. This is this fox guy. That's actually pretty cool. I mean, it's kind of like a Nine Tails knockoff or maybe the the nine-tailed fox from naruto but it's always room for another fox out there in the anime you know what 37 we got miganagi the talismanic warrior let's make sure that's right i'm gonna click on it to see if i'm on the wrong thing here no that is exactly what it's called all right well that's interesting all right well, we're only through one pack we got two boxes to go here let's settle in here let's get let's get rolling we'll check out the cards we'll check out the uh the big hits all right we got this guy this is really weird looking looks like kind of like a anime star wars dog guy um i did look this one up this is like some sort of like cremation dog or something i think it says it's kind of really strange uh, we got goblin and a i don't know like lizard people got that thing and then our rare in here is 45, which is Eclipse. All right, well, that's kind of pretty. All right, all right. I'm going to stash these away, and then maybe someday they'll be worth, like, a dollar a card. And, you know, I'll, that guy will have actually made me money. I don't have to thank him. All right. We have a sheep bug electric thing. Sure. Trap guard with a bunch of trap guys. That guy that was, I think that guy was pulling that sled earlier. Got that thing. And then our rare is this weird looking harpy thing. Number 16, we got Nico Gal 2. Okay. Very original. Yu-Gi-Oh! was really awesome back in the day. I played for a while. I definitely have fond memories of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, just playing the game, collecting the cards, uh, watching the show. I mean, it was just it was life back then. <clears throat> I can imagine most of you aren't going to watch the rest of this, and I'm, that's perfectly fine. And if you even watch to listen to me talk boring like that for that long, I appreciate it. But um, if you're here for this yet... Just know, we're about to have a good time. Got the cremation dog again. It looks like a mole with a cape and a, and a cane. Sure. That's creepy. And then we got this guy. There is a card that I want to pull out of here. If I pull it, I will say it. I say that's the one. JP031. This is Heartless Hound Thunder Emperor Drainu. That is not a joke. That is how long that name is. Okay, we got the Thunder King guy again. I wish the set was bigger because we're going to end up hitting a lot of dupes. Uh, we got the Waterlamb, Army Base, 
mini fairy. And this is actually one that I wanted to hit. This is the blue, this is the dragon. This is the Bluetooth burst dragon. Isn't it? 16? Oh no, this isn't. What is it? No, it is, I'm, dude, I'm losing my mind. Seven, this is 17. Yeah, that's cool. All right, we wanted to pull this. Cool, cool. So we got the one we wanted from the set. There are ones I didn't look at yet, so maybe there's some other cool ones. I'm just looking here. There's a card named the Three Warp Granny Sisters. Dude, like, this is so weird. This is some weird stuff, but we like that. You know, maybe we grade this and keep this to remind us of this momentous occasion. Maybe we do that. Hmm. We're going to put him out front there. He's, he's the highlight right now. What if we pulled another one? There is something called a Rush Rare, and I think there's a Rush Rare of him in here. There's one, this thing says chemicalized sal salamander. Like, what the heck is that? Dude? What the heck is this stuff? What has Yu-Gi-Oh turned into? All right, we got, oh, this has got to be that card. This has got to be this, the grandma thing, right? Yeah, the three warp granny sisters. What are the odds of that? They open the next pack and it's that card. The three warp granny sisters. Like, what? Mole guy, cremation dog, Really weird, weird turtle guy. And then we got another ultra rare hit. What do we got here? Number 24. 24, what are you? Ultra Vio Lady. Okay. Okay, okay. This is fun. I'm having fun with this. You know, if anything, if it, if it didn't cause me stress, you know, the fact that I was almost out, what, 2500 or basically $2,800, um, you know, maybe I would have... I would have be enjoying this a little bit more, but it was pretty stressful. I was a little irritated. All right. We got Water Sheep, Bubble Palace, uh, Rocket Arm Guy, Goblin, Trolley Guy, and then this guy. He's fancy looking. What are you? Number 44, we have Splendid, <laughs> Splendid Floor Master. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me, some of these are good. I'll tell you what. Don't worry, man. This is going to be like a 50-minute video here because we got a lot to go. All right, so we got uh, Wolf Gun Guy, uh, Dog Samurai. Is this like a theme? Water Sheep again, Army Base, and then a Fire Deer. What are we here? Number 33. This is Beast Gear Sage Roller Stag. Yep, couldn't make this up if I tried. All right. We got the Electro Bug Sheep. Okay, we got a new one. This is the Wind Sheep. Um, scary Face Girl. What the heck is this? Oh, we got one of the, this is one of those things. Uh, this, what is this though? It's like a goblin space shuttle. Oh, that's actually sick looking, dude. What? Okay, this is cool. This is cool. JPO25. This is Void Velger Requiem. All right. Don't know what that means, but this is pretty cool. It's got like texture to it, like legitimate texture. Okay. Yu-Gi-Oh with the cracked ice texture. All right. All right. Doing big things here. Little did this guy know he sent me all the loaded packs. It was actually on purpose. He was doing me a favor. All right, come on now. These pool pads don't always work great. All right, we got the guy pulling the cart. We got the, uh, the mini fairy chick. The space shuttle with the goblins. Pew, like, why was this in the middle? Is this trap hole? No, this isn't trap hole. There is a trap hole. If this is trap hole, I'm gonna be psyched. Uh, 64. What do we got? Oh, we got a rare with this one too. That's why 64 is trap lid. Okay, okay. A little bit of mix up there, you know. Hey, we ain't trap hole, but we got a trap lid. Okay, okay. And the wolf guy is 08, which is heartless hound striking Kaiken knuckle. Okay, we're going to move on from that. 
power. I'm gonna put that there. This is fun. I'm having fun with this. You might not be, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm $2,500 richer today. Well, not really richer. I got the money back that I was owed. And I'm here opening random Yu Gi Oh packs. And yeah, we're having fun. We got this guy, uh, Star Cannon guy, Samurai Dog, um, Fairy Chick in the Rain, uh, Demon Chick with music notes. And then we got this dolphin with a treasure chest on his head. And he is Dolphin's treasure chest. Okay. Well, I, I mean, it's, I mean, I guess it, 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 that's what it is. Dolphin's treasure chest. Okay. It says it is what it's, just, you know, depicting the bee. All right. Well, those are there for the loose packs, which I also found is interesting too. Not only did they like shovel them in there, but they gave me loose packs along with two booster boxes like i i don't really i don't really get it so all right well i don't know if these are smashed i mean it really doesn't matter either way i mean but we're hoping for a rush rare of this one if we get a rush rare of that one since like that's why i said there's a rush rare of that that'd be that'd be pretty sick all right box two or Box one after booster packs. All right, we got these three granny things, Bubble Palace, Water Sheep, Weird Chicken Turtle, and then a goblin thingy on a lava boat. So let's see what you are. Number 27 is Infernal Kappa. Do you, that's what this is, a Kappa. A Kappa. All right, so it's a Kappa. We got Kappas. We got all kinds of stuff here. Yu-Gi-Oh! Where's Yuki at, man? Why isn't he in the front of this? He die or something? Alright, we got Bubble Palace. We got Army Guy reading a book. Weird Torso. Smiley Face Chick. Um, Demented Ogre Guy. And then we got this. Oh, is this Magical, uh, magical Cylinder? Magical Cylinder was, like, super playable back in the day. What is this? 59... Pax Cylinder. Sure. I guess this is the modern day version of Magic Cylinder. I wonder if these open better like this in the full time. It's a struggle you can get a grip. Nope. 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 No time. Come on now. Alright. We got Star Wars Guy. Fairy in the Rain. Weird Torso Chick, Samurai Hound, and then this is also a Kappa. But is that the actual name? Just Kappa? 004. Hayasube. Oh, this was actually a card, a, original card. Uh, this is like a common from, or was it Hayo Gonsube or Gonsuke from, um, I want to say it might even have been the original set, like, like Legend of Blue Eyes. That's kind of cool. All right, all right. We're still waiting. The big hit out of here is the the uh, the whale guy, the big soldier. You'll see what I mean if we pull him. He can be a rush rare, or he is the only seeker rare in the set. All right, we got army guy reading a book. Bubble whale, or yeah, bubble whale. Bubble sheep, the new one. Uh, we'll call that one half and half. Goblin space shuttle, and then we got this raging bull here. You are number 42. You are a bear Ushioni. Okay. Moving on. All right. All right. We got Army Base, Cremating Hound, uh, Mole Guy, and then we got this horse. Okay. And then we got the. This was like Eclipse from earlier. So we got this horse, JP040. This is Thunder Gazelle. Nothing too crazy there. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, it's a gazelle and it's thundery. So that one actually makes sense. All right, we got Wind Sheep. Okay, okay. We got Metropolis. We'll call that one Metropolis. Um, we got Laser Hand Guy, Mole Guy, and then we got this guy again, the... Uh, 
weird long name thing that doesn't seem like it belongs for it being a fox. Alright, we got the guy that was pulling the cart. We got this trap gang. Uh, the Metropolis. We got this trap again. We got this one earlier. I can't remember what it's called. We got this chick earlier too. This was number two, whatever it was. And this was like some weird thunder trap thing. Alright, we got Thunderbug Sheep. Got Gatling Arm. Oh, that's a new one. What is this? Just call that one Jellyfish. Samurai Dog. And then, did we get this one yet? 31. This is Heartless Hound. Oh, yeah. Thunder Emperor. Excuse me. Drainu. Alright, we have Water Sheep, Star Wars Guy, Samurai Dog, uh, what do we want to call this one? Call this Demonic Melody, that's what we're going to, we're going to be really deep there, and then this was that weird, like, Floor Master guy, he's the master of all floor. Alright, we got Pistol Dog. Cremation Dog, Army Base. I still don't know what I want to call this one. Let's call that one Wings. Oh, then we got another one of these dragons. All right, all right. Is it the same pools? Like, does everyone get the same thing? All right, we got double dragons. We got double. What is this called? Blue, blue. What is blue? Uh, blue. La, 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 17. Where are you? Blue what? Well, you were a Bluetooth burst dragon. It's got the old blue teeth, you know? Got one of those blue Slurpees from Turkey Hill. All right. We got Goblin Wagon, Trap Gang, Guy Pulling the Wagon. You know what I mean. Let me see. Guy Pulling the Wagon. Uh, weird Claw Beast. And then, ooh, this is a new one. This is not Ultra. Oh, it's like a sword. Okay, okay. Ultra Air Sword. 56. What do we got? What do we got? We got Yamada no Notsurugi. Tutsurugi? Sure. But that's pretty sick. It's got a dragon climbing up it. I mean, this is pretty sick. All right. Put that in the hit pile. I wonder if we, if we don't get a rush rare in every box or if we do. It's pretty cool to see you. All right. We got Weird Torso Chick, Samurai Dog, Army Guy reading a book, Bubble Sheep. And then we got this guy again. I don't remember his name, but he was pretty forgettable. So we'll put him to the side. All right, Samurai Dog, Fairy in the Rain, um, Electric Bug Sheep. Oh, she's new. She's pretty. Okay. And then we got the uh, Dolphin Treasure Chest, which is pretty self-explanatory. So we got 35 here. Delirium Papillion. Okay. Interesting. Huh. Well, it's a pretty looking card. Moving on. All right, we got Jellyfish, Gatling Arms, uh, Samurai Dog, <laughs> Pistol Wolf. Oh, my God, we got another one of these. What? Why are we getting the same rush rares? Come on, man. I want this one. I want this one. Or I want the whale. This is, are these booster boxes just supposed to be, like, identical or what? I mean, we didn't get the identical super rares, but... Ah, oh, come on. I want the whale, man. I want the whale, and I want the rush rare of that. All right. Fairy Chick in the Rain... Kappa, Star Wars guy, Water Sheep, and then we got this Fire Deer Antler guy. All right, well, that's box two. Or box one after the booster packs. Jumping into box two. Okay, come on, open up. I don't know why I'm being careful with any of this, considering, like, this is just all we got in a box and <clears throat> disappear for centuries
All right, last box, because I know all you guys are super excited how boring and unentertaining this video was. Not only did you get a long, drawn-out story where you stared at the screen, but you also got to see Yu-Gi-Oh cards open. I mean, I'm not saying you're spoiled, but you're kind of spoiled. You know, it just is what it is. Okay. I take care of you guys, you know? All right, Metropolis, Samurai Dog. Fairy Chick in the Rain, Three Grandmas, and okay, here's a new one. We got a Dalmatian this time with a sword. All right, he is, what, JP010. We got Heartless Hound, Apex Katana, Dan Biramation. Okay. <laughs> okay. Putting that to the side. Come on, whale. We want the whale. All right, we got Kappa, we got the Water Sheep, we got Bubble Town, Weird Torso Chick, and okay, here's a new one again. We got a Mushroom Elephant or something like that, or a Squid Elephant, 21. We have, okay, Parashroom Colony, I wasn't too far off there, is a Mushroom. Interesting, interesting. All right, we got Mole Guy, we got Water Sheep, we got Army Base, we got, what was I going to call this one? Wonder Wings or something? I don't know. And then we got this weird guy with a with a, with a club. Um, okay, 14. We, oh, God, all right, what? Let me just make sure this is right. 14, 14, okay. So this is Alien Count of the White Dwarf, St. Germain. Okay, then moving on. Come on now. All right, we got Kappa Trap. <sighs> we got Half and Half. Samurai Dog. We got this chick again. And this is actually a new one. Okay, we got like some weird dog chick or something. Breathing Fire. What is this? 46. 46 is... Mellow Mellow Meeg Ultra Beam. Okay. Sounds about right to me. Sure. Moving on. We got Star Wars Dog, we got Cremation Dog, we got Goblin Pulling a Wagon, Gatling Arms, and another one of these dragons, dude. Well, we got, the, I said, what if we get like three of them? So we got three of them. We got three dragons. So I like that card. I'm not upset necessarily, but I wanted the Rush Rare. I'm really hoping we don't see another Rush Rare of the same card. You know, when you get stuff like this for free in place of, you know... Lots of money's worth of cards. You at least want to get the hits, you know? You want to get what you want. You still want the fools. All right, we got Thunderbug Sheep, Trap Gang, uh, Wagon Pool Guy, Big Claws. Oh, there's a new one. Okay. Uh, a little, like, suited, armor-suited lizard guy with a, with a pole axe. We got 15. What are you? 15. You are... Oh, okay. I don't know how to pronounce that. This is... Icti Ostergaard? It's all one word. Icti Ostergaard? Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on from that one real quick, too. That's interesting. I mean, I think my names that I'm coming up with some of these are better than what the actual names are. Just saying. All right. We got Water Sheep, uh, Samurai Dog, Bubble Sheep. Okay, there's a new one. There's a new Super Rare. And also, oh, dude, check this out. It's like a Goblin Boat. It's like a goblin lava boat thing. All right. He's like on like a, a makeshift ski do or something. Got to check these out. All right. So first up, we got this one. This is like a ghost, ghost armor. 36. 36 is splitter slime. Oh, he's a slime controlling the armor. Okay. That's kind of cool. I like that. And this one, this one's cool. 62. What do we got? Give me a cool name for this one. What do we got? 62. <laughs> Kappa's gas. Yes, you heard me right. Cap is gas. So uh, that's that's interesting. Okay, whatever. Kind of let me down a little on that one, but whatever. Let's move on again. Move on again. Oh, this pack is being something. Um, in other news, 
stay tuned because at some point, probably next week, I will be doing an opening of, uh, God, it's terrible. I don't know the set name. Is it Shiny? Is it Alt, Alt, Shiny EX? Shiny EX? Whatever the new Shiny set is. I bought like nine booster boxes, but I'll be doing an opening. Um, we got three grandmas. We got Mole with a pole, Cremation Dog, Kappa, and then we got this Lava Bike. I did look this up, right? What this one was. We'll do it again just in case. Because I know you're you're interested. Yeah, Infernal Kappa D Duet. Come on, whale. Come on, whale. <sighs> Papa needs a whale. Papa needs a whale. Come on. Alright, we got the cremation dog, fairy chick in the rain, gatling arms. Okay, there's a new one. Didn't see yet. We got what is this chick gonna be? Strawberry patch kid. And then we got this cylinder again. So this is 34. Berry Fresh Happiness. I kind of like that. I like that name. I like that. We're gonna put that one out. I like that one. Berry Fresh Happiness. And it's very close to Strawberry Patch Kid. Very fresh happiness. Berries do make me happy. I do like me. I need some berries. Alright, we got Bubble Sheep. Bubble, Bubble Town. Gatling Arms. Wagon getting pulled. And then this thing again. Ah, that's probably another ultra for this one. Dude, some variety here would have been nice. I feel like there's there's a, a, a decent amount of ultra rares in this, actually. And then I'm kind of surprised that we didn't get any. There we go. Open that one a different way. All right, we got Thunderbug Sheep. Wind Sheep. We haven't seen... Wind Sheep must be a short print. We haven't seen too many of him. Um, Weird Torso Chick. We got Goblin Space Shuttle, and then we got the Hayasube. Last four packs of this insane adventure I've been on since September. Finally ending now. This is like my closure for this whole thing. Um, we got Pistol Dog, uh, Samurai Dog, Water Sheep, Army Base. Oh, what's this thing? That's sick. This is our Rush Rare. Let's go. What is this? This is like some crazy Salamander thing. What, 20? What are you? Number 20. Oh, this is the chemicalized salamander. All right, I'm cool with that. I like that a lot. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We didn't get the whale, but we got a couple packs left. We didn't get the whale, but we got this thing. Okay. We're grading it all. We're sending it into PSA. All right, come on, pack. I'm even getting tired of this. I know you guys are probably either gone or done with it too, but I'm getting done with it. That salamander is cool though, I will say. All right. We got the goblin wagon, guy that pulls the wagon, trap gang. Okay, we didn't see her yet. She looks cool. This looks like the chick from the, okay, this is the chick from that little bubble or the raining one. And then we got this minotaur bull guy. So this is 30. Oh, this is Dion Keto the Cure Main. No way, dude. Uh, I don't think it was... What was it called in the original? Dion Keto... I don't know, but that's actually cool. So that throws back some nostalgia. Like, as soon as I read Dion Keto, like, I immediately was like, oh my gosh, like, I know what this is. So we're pulling her out. That's actually really cool. That's some nostalgia from playing back in the day. Although, oh, it was Dion Keto the Cure Master, and it was a it was a magic card that healed like a thousand life points or something. I think it was from like the Blue Eyes decks. Um, the dude that was on there looked really creepy. She looks very pretty. So I don't know, I don't know what changed there, but I like the change and I like the I like the card. <clears throat> All right, we got Bubble Town, Weird Torso Chick, Army Guy reading a book, Weird Creepy Goblin Animal Guys, and then we got Eclipse. All right, so last pack. It's been a journey. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, in a serious note, you guys can at least take something from this. And um, I got very lucky on this situation. This was uh, a good outcome. It doesn't always end up like this. It's just a lesson learned, and it'll make me make smarter decisions when it comes to doing this kind of stuff in the future and not just look at the dollar sign. So take from it what you will. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Last pack, we got Wonder Wings, half and half, Jellyfish, Army Guy reading a book, and the weird one that I don't like the name of. 
but it's a fox. But I like the picture. So, yeah, this was fun. This was cool. This was, like I said, this is like closure for me in this whole situation. I'm glad it's over with. I'm glad I got the money back. And we got to open up some super sick Yu-Gi-Oh cards for you guys in the process. So, <laughs> as always, like, subscribe, comment down below, or don't. But either way, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you.